Welcome engineers to race our problem and today's problem is getting through the Spanish GP in my my team. Um, two days between the Netherlands Grand Prix and the Spanish Grand Prix so we're going to fill that with some um, driver and promotion filming. Um, should give us some more claim but unfortunately we have a gap in the um, timing so um, yeah that's a little bit annoying. Um, got a new sponsor available for us. Um, as we got to level 5 acclaim in the last race so um, I think um, we're gonna go for one that's nice and easy just looking through um, sponsor goals at the moment and it um, it's up, uh, the highest weekly um, income the easiest goal seems to be complete all the practice programs it'd go for this one last season so we're gonna go for it again I mean not last season last career mode Anyway, it don't matter. Um, sponsor slots now. Gonna change it so that Equinoxes are the four of them. And um, same with XXY. That adds up to eight. Leaving three for the final one. So just put an XXY in its um, slots now. I think I've put it in um, one so far. Just debating which ones I should um, get rid of and keep. I... Um, Gonna put it on one of the halo slots, um, no, the um, wing slots here because it's nice and it's one of those um, sponsors that can fit there. So I'm um, putting it on the back as well. So that, um, I'm not putting the bad one at the back. So it's, um, it's, I'm not sure quite what we're at, um, what we're doing, but I do know that um, the um, that hard one is gonna be at the at the back and um, the hard. Then the worst response, um, so like Deb at the rear wheels, and um, I think also near the halo, but not on the halo, so uh, where it already is, to be honest. And then I think it's also going to be on the top of the engine. No, XXY will go at the top of the engine cover. Um, I'm not sure where the third slot is going to be for it, but I think it's on the front wing. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, XXY is going to be on the front wing, um, along with the rear wing, and um, on the side pod there. So that's the three XXY slots done. Going to change, jeez, going to change the colour to the um, light, light blue. I um, am going to change it for the next episode. I haven't recorded it, by the way. I am just going to change it. I'm just going to change the luminance. Um, to 75 to match the team overalls and the team colours as well and I think it would look quite nice with the um, um, colours although I do wish that um, s if the colour weren't exactly like it is but um, yeah because a darker colour there would look quite nice compared to the um, green and blue that I've already got going on um, I do believe that there's only three Equinox um, sponsors on the car maybe only even two so I um, will be changing that, um, moment count 2, 3, so um, yeah, and you'll see me cross over to the right hand side, because I think I'm already in the colour selection when I'm not, <laughs> yeah, my bad, jumping the gun, uh, so yeah, it's a little bit stupid, need to pay more attention, uh, yeah, once again, um, change the colour, um, I think this is the second spot, for this long one now, so just one more slot for it, um, here. And then I think Equinox is on the rear wing as well, so that's the four slots for Equinox, four slots for XXY, and four, three slots for the, uh, um, other sponsor, I don't know how to say it. I'm just looking across now, making sure it's worked. Uh, actually no, I'm going to change the colour. Of the front of the car, I'm gonna swap the blue and the green around at the front. Um, it didn't look quite as nice um, when onboard um, shots when editing. I didn't quite notice it during the race or qualifying or practice, to be honest. But um, now that I've gone back through the editing and compared it to Vietnam um, Zandvoort, it does look much better with the other way around, and it kind of does look much better. Com um, the other way around compared to what it is now so um yeah watch out for that change in monaco maybe um we will have a um special livery one-off livery for the britain grand prix i've just got to try and figure out what that's going to be like 
and um, once again going through all the driver rating so I can update it once again they had changed but maybe only the experience this time I'm not quite sure and just speeding going through this and um, yeah not too long for that so um yeah um changing the end comp components to the absolute least one these should be um, number three on all of them and if there's one or two I think um, I'm going to stay with the one, actually no, I'm going to change to the ones, so um, yeah, not too bad, um, yeah, so um, yeah, that's looking good so far, but what isn't looking good is the R&D selection, unfortunately we're second last ahead of only Williams, so um, not good, but the Spanish Grand Prix, hopefully we can do quite well off the back of Zandvoort, where we got our first points of the season, so um, yeah, it does look good for us, um, based off the previous race results, but you never know, anything can happen. Um, what won't happen is um, rain, it's going to stay, stay dry for the whole um, Grand Prix weekend, which is quite nice, and um, yep, just highlighting the fact that we're bad. <laughs> uh, please don't do that, uh, you'll be fired if you keep doing that, so please don't do that. Anyway, practice, um, get used to the car, and... Um, yeah, um, I kind of I didn't swap the colours at the rear of the car because I wanted to keep the um, green in the um, shiny bit of the car. If you could, because um, if you look in the um, when I'm changing the delivery, um, the green on the rear is like a shinier green, so I wanted to keep that green. But um, yeah, it would make sense a lot more on the car if it swapped around. But I don't like the green a lot on the car, although it is my favourite colour. It would make sense that I like the green on the car, but I don't. So yeah, I prefer the um, darker blue. Maybe because of... Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure why. It, it just goes better with the darker being more prominent colour. But um, maybe, um, maybe it's because of the sponsors. So maybe if I change them darker, maybe it would be much better. I don't know, I'm going to do some experimenting with it before the next episode. Anyway, um, doing the race reactor program, unfortunately we invalidated our second lap, so we're um, you know, not going to do that anymore. Um, instead, we're going to change the setup just a little bit and go out um, to do another one, another race strategy program. This time we don't do any invalidations on our second lap, and I can tell you we don't do any on our third lap. So, um, yeah. And we've got consistent, which is nice, uh, allowing us to get more resource points to upgrade the car. Um, but at the moment, we can't do any of that because, um, yeah, um, we don't have enough um, uh, R&D points to do that. Or, um, we don't have enough... I mean, I'm not sure what's slowing this down. I mean, it's probably because I'm focusing more towards the power unit and the durability. So I think I am going to start going towards the aerodynamics and the sashi. I think I'll prioritise it aerodynamics because that's where Williams are closest. Um, they're furthest away from us in front. And then durability, they're closest to us in front. Um, sashi because they're... No, yeah, because they're closest to us behind. And then aerodynamics last because they're furthest from us behind. So yeah, um, I believe on the Sashi side they are right behind us and on the dynamic side we're in ninth and they're in 11th. So um, you've got a little bit of time before they can catch up uh, catch up for us on the air dynamics. So maybe we just focus heavily on the um, areas that we're good at and then um, yeah, once we get to the top um, we focus on the things that we're bad at. But... We can't focus on being totally bad at because we've got qualifying and I'm usually quite good at qualifying. So yeah, you would have seen the um, green there that I was referring to. Anyway, lap one, I'm going to go on board with it, as you know why. Um, George Russell set in the 18 3, so hopefully we can beat that as we should be quicker than Williams. And into turn one, you would have seen a grey patch on the right hand, left hand side, so we break about that point. Um, maybe in the next episode to come during practice, I'll change the racing line off to get used to it. 
but I'm not sure. Um, going through turn four now, getting getting on the curb a little bit, not on the grass, because otherwise um, um, front tyres will slow down, causing the rear to go in front of the front. So um, yeah, you don't want that to happen. And towards turn seven now, um, getting on the curb a little bit. Oh, we kept cutting that in turn, in um, practice, so that's why I kept getting validations. Um, going on to the um, second straight now, getting the DRS open, heading towards the hairpin, breaking about the 100 meter board, um, locking up just a little bit, and um, then going towards the final sector now. Um, no, don't go full power on the braking, otherwise you'll lock up, so go about half braking. Same for these um, corners here, and um, breaking about when the board disappears from above. You want to cut this corner a little bit, but unfortunately more than I did, so um, I've lost a little bit of time there. Coming across the line, it's going to put us into P8, but that is behind our teammate, so you don't want that to happen. On our second run at the very end, we do <sighs> cut the corner just a little bit too much, and that would have put us six tenths up, and I did check. It would have put us higher than P21. Yeah, mistakes are starting to and show through in um, qualifying, and um, no mistakes in the race. So uh, yeah, a little bit odd. But um, six tenths would have put us just behind Giovinazzi in 18th. So um, yeah, extremely disappointing um, for myself. And um, yeah, you know I've done bad when. I'm behind I lot. I don't want to downgrade I lot, but I am much better than him. He is really bad. So um, yeah, that's annoying. Anyway, it don't matter. Um, we can make up for it in the race. So um, yeah, as long as we do do that, um, we will be fine. And um, yeah, we've just got to hope that we stay out of trouble. And um, we do well in the race. Because, um, yeah, we've got a mammoth of a task ahead of us if we want to do well in the race after that poor, 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 poor qualifying. Just feeding what Jeff is telling us at the moment. Luckily, it's um, dry, so it's not going to affect our race too much. But we're at the back, so it doesn't really matter. Spanish Grand Prix has been a permanent fixture on the Formula One calendar for over 30 years now, and for good reason. Do you remember Michael Schumacher's absolute dominance here in that rain-soaked Grand Prix in 1996? That day he took his first ever victory for Ferrari, and we've had many more iconic moments since. The Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya then, a high-speed 2.89 mile circuit which demands an efficient downforce package and bravery on the part of the driver especially through the blind right of Turn 9, which we might just see taken flat this weekend. Anthony Davidson is here once again for today's Grand Prix. Why don't we kick off by discussing Max Verstappen? That was a great win of the Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? There are never any guarantees in this business, but certainly the performance last time out would have boosted their confidence coming into this one. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Bottas, Carlos Sainz, and Norris, Albon, Stroll, Vettel, and Daniel Ricciardo, Ocon, Raikkonen, Roman Grosjean, and Kvyat, Gasly, Giovinazzi, Kevin Magnussen, and George Russell, Ireland, the engineer, Latifi, and Sergio Perez completes our grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Lucky for us, um, Perez has a penalty, so we'll be starting in P20, allowing us um, one grid higher. And maybe if we let Perez pass, maybe we can, um, maybe he can carve through the field and um, help us upwards um, on the field. But I don't know what we're going to do at the moment. Um, we're just going to get on with um, the formation lap um, because we're um, not going to go anywhere if our tyres are cold and same with our brakes so we um, want to make sure they're nice and warm so um, yeah. Yep, just, just reiterating what I've told, uh, said 
Um, now here we are for the reformation of the grid um, for the race start. Um, yeah. Uh, first time that we'll be starting behind our teammate this season, so uh, we don't want that to happen too much. So um, yeah, that's going to be very annoying if it happens quite a lot more, because um, we are the better driver. It is no secret that uh, what that about that. But um, yeah, whilst I was um, trying to speak, um, the last five red lights, like five red lights, went on and um, they went out, and um, we got a poor start. Maybe because I was talking like that. Anyway, um, Russell on the medium. So I wish I checked the race strategies now. Maybe we should have followed Russell. Um, go down the inside of Russell, putting us into P19 as Isla also went round the outside of Russell. Maybe go. Um, Hopefully we're close enough to Eilat to make a dive. It looks like we are going to make a dive, but Sergio Perez also dives down our inside to put the Williams at the back. And now it puts us P19 and 20. We're going to go down the inside, but then that just forces Eilat to go down the inside. We're going to try and follow him through, but it don't matter. It don't work, and we end up behind Magnussen. And we, I think we make a little bit of contact, so that's why we go a little bit sideways with each other. So that don't quite work. And now we're back into P20 with the Williams play fast somehow. So I'm going to look to make a dive bomb on Magnussen. Go down the inside, but he tries to go down the inside a little bit there. And um, we also take that opportunity to go down the inside of Eilat. So that puts us up into P18 after a chaotic first lap, which is complete opposite of what we want. So um, yeah, that, that bodes well. That, that, that bodes well for the race, doesn't it? <laughs> um, anyway, um, back of Perez now. So hopefully we can, if we can follow him. But if we, if he um, don't carve his way through, um, we're just gonna have to try and overtake him. Yellow flags. Um, can tell you that is for the McLaren of Carlos Sainz, and we're gonna wrap up our stim now. No, we're not. We're gonna run into the back of Perez. And retire with no flashbacks. Uh, there's times where I really regret putting no flashbacks. Uh, what happened? Um, Carlos Sainz just pulling to the side. Uh, everyone just slows down. Why does Vettel slow down? He doesn't need to slow down. There was literally a gap to him to the front. Oh my god. The AI. Yeah, they just slow down. Even though there's a gap in front of them. I mean, look at the gap there. I mean, what is Vettel doing? Why is he slowing down? Oh, my God. Because of that, I've crashed out. Oh, my God. That is nothing to do with me. Yes, I should have slowed down. It's yellow flags. But the AI, what are you doing? The AI. You don't just slow down like that. And how am I meant to avoid that? Yes, I should have been going slower. But, Another like... Come on. You don't just stop randomly. You usually give a little bit of a warning. I mean, come on. Strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team, and they certainly deserve it. Maybe you should have just pitted lap one. <laughs> Go on to the hards and then just try and stick out the whole race. Ah, oh, that's very annoying. Very, very, very annoying. Especially after points. And what makes it worse is it weren't my fault. It's not my fault that the AI decided to slow down quite quickly. Especially when there is a gap in front of them. Uh, Sergio Perez ends up in 10th as well. So, um, yeah, if we stayed with Perez, we could have got 11th. 
uh, still 14th in the drivers championship and um, 8th in the constructors still I think and I'm ahead of Haas somehow still no that means we're going to lose out in the rivalry I think that means that it's going to put us 6 points behind Magnussen good day ok you've now taken it okay. um yeah the car is competitive really you just need to develop the engine um it's none of these what, what, what about the I'm, I was an idiot man what, what about that that crash was nothing to do with um, the fact oh god uh, <laughs> <coughs> 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 yeah six points from that now and I have worked out to beat Magnussen he has to either not finish Baku or Mon I mean, if I beat him in both qualifying the race and the fastest laps in both races we would be drawing so um, it's going to be very hard to beat A66. Hey, oh, that's a good omen. <laughs> anyway, that's the end. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, it's nothing to do with me. Um, that's all the AI. Um, yeah. Sorry um, for it being short, but um, nothing I could do about that. Sorry. Uh, see you in the next one for Monaco next week. Oh, um, unranked video coming out this weekend.